Well, uh, I kind of get the idea that you guys might want me to take a look at the Dark Zone Thunderbolt. It's not like this blaster is brought up every single time I've ever brought up the Strife and is constantly told in my comment section and on Discord that it's a superior one-up to the Strife in every way. No, no, no. That would be asinine. This is the Thunderbolt. It is a very, 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 very popular blaster that has showed up in 2023 from Dart Zone, and it's taken me quite a while to actually get to it, and there's two big reasons for that. I already have a Strife, and I already have a Spectrum. I actually have three different Strifes in total, if you count the Straven and Tesseract. Um, and the other problem is that, uh, I just don't really like Dart Zone all that much. As a blaster brand, they're okay because they've made some pretty good things, like this. They've made the, uh, uh, they made the Jurassic Pro, wait, the stock flex is on that, um, uh, they made the, they made the, uh, what the heck is it called? They made the Outlaw. Yeah, the Outlaw is good. They made the Dictator. I, I really like the Dictator. Um, yeah, and then as a company, they have this, this issue where they've started turning into Hasbro. Like, they tried to trademark Blaster Tag last year for no reason, and on top of that, they've, uh... They've been cheaping out on a lot of the parts. Like on the Omnia, it's notorious for shipping basically broken, having the flywheel cage misaligned so it always shoots to the right for no reason, and the switches were incredibly crappy and burnt out on regular consumer's blasters even when it wasn't overused at all. Not to mention it's, it has runaway issues and it's not even shooting that fast. I don't know, it's just, Darts is kind of a train wreck nowadays. But if I had a nickel for every time I've heard the word Thunderbolt show up in my comment section or on Discord, I could probably buy a Ferrari. I bought this thing, I showed it off in my Discord server, and immediately was bombarded with DMs. When are you gonna review the Thunderbolt? When are you gonna get the Thunderbolt review out? Have you reviewed the Thunderbolt yet? Why haven't you reviewed this yet? Are you gonna review this? I really hope you're gonna review this blaster. Holy crap! You people really want me to cover the Thunderbolt, and I mean, why not? I have a Thunderbolt now, so there's no reason not to review it. So finally, let's take a look at the Dart Zone Thunderbolt and see if this blaster is actually a quote-unquote strife killer. Spoiler alert, it still isn't a strife killer. But unlike the Spectrum, this one's actually pretty good. <laughs> So the Thunderbolt is a 2023 release from Dart Zone, and it was a Target exclusive, which kind of sucks, but it's still the blaster, and I don't really know. This thing released to a tremendous amount of attention, like a lot of attention, because this blaster is kind of the successor to the Spectrum, and everybody said to me that this thing fixed all the problems the Spectrum had. Now that is quite an achievement, because if you guys remember my review on the Spectrum, or you know my opinion on the Spectrum, you'll know that I don't really like the Spectrum. It sucks, and it has so many issues that I just don't enjoy playing with it at all. This blaster supposedly fixing all the problems the Spectrum had is quite an achievement, because the Spectrum had a lot of problems, like a lot, a lot of problems. So we're going to see if that's the case and start off with the design. But first, this blaster does quickly come with a removable and strike stock compatible stock and a 15 dart blue magazine and a whole bunch of chili darts. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to be focusing on the design without either of these or the iron sight or the kind of red dot iron sight thing either. So I'm just going to put those down and take a look at the blaster as a whole. I didn't really like the Spectrum's design. I wasn't really that big of a fan of this one either but honestly, after seeing it in person, this looks really good. Like, it looks really, really good. I love the design. 
I think it's super cool looking. Like, this is the perfect size for a blaster. It's about the same size as the Modulus ECS-10, so it's not too big. You can easily use it as a primary or even just as a sidearm like this, but it also isn't too small to where it feels like a pistol like the Strife does. And unlike the Modulus ECS-10, the batteries are still back here and it has really good balancing, so you can easily hold it like a pistol and not have to worry about it being stupidly front heavy. I think that the way that this thing looks is absolutely Absolutely fantastic. Look at all these like racing stripes and stuff. This looks like a circuit board. This looks like some kind of vent and all these curved lines make it look like it should come from a sci-fi movie. I think that it is a very nice design as well as being super simplistic and already the paint has kind of been like roughed out a little bit with the texturing it has. So if you want to paint this blaster, be everyone's guest. It's got a very nice setup for painting and even out of the box, I think it looks good. I don't really like the color scheme that much. I think that the green is just a bit too bright, especially for something like this, but to each their own. I think it looks all right. And if we tactical this thing up and take a look at it now, it comes with this big iron sight thing and this really cool looking stock that matches the shape of the back of the blaster and this magazine that continues all the details from the blaster down into the mag. And I think that this looks absolutely insane. This is an awesome looking blaster all together. And I really have to give Dart Zone a point here for making a really good looking primary. This is well done. I love the way this thing looks. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, a foregrip, and a stock, which is removable, but it's not just this part of the stock that's removable. It's a buffer tube on the back. So if you want, you can add more buffer tube stocks on it, which that's awesome. I love this. This thing needs to come back. This needs to be more used in Nerf blasters. Seriously, bring this back. Do this more. This is cool. I'm just going to be showing you the stock that it comes with out of the box. The grip is actually really good. I think that this is a very nice grip and is a substantial upgrade over the Spectrum's grip. As for the foregrip, it is very nice and big and is actually removable. If you take the two screws off here, you actually have a rail underneath it that is being held onto. You can't just slide it off, which is unfortunate, but you can at least remove the foregrip if you want to put like an um, angled foregrip or something. And as for the stock, it is very sturdy and very very comfortable to brace against your shoulder. I love the way this stock feels, and honestly, I love the way the ergonomic setup of this blaster holds up, except for the same problem that the, uh, the Spectrum had, the rev trigger. It's still too big. They still made the rev trigger too big. Even on the Omnia, they fixed this by making the rev trigger bigger so that you can fit both fingers on it. But this one is still that terrible, like, finger and a half sized rev trigger. It just sucks. I hate having this rev trigger like this because my ring finger constantly rubs against it. It feels wrong. It feels stupid. Just either put a trigger guard on the rev trigger, which seems ridiculous, but, like, at this point, you kind of have to because the rev trigger is too freaking big. On that note, how does this blaster actually work? Well, it's basically a strife reskin. You have a jam door on the left side only, you have this mag release, you have a magazine, you put darts in, you put the magazine in, you rev the blaster, and then it's semi-automatic. And it revs up really fast. That's half a second for a rev up time. That is really, really good. Even for dart zone standards, that's pretty good. That's a very nice rev up time out of this blaster, which makes sense. It's using six double A's. And uh, really quickly, uh, before I got to anything else, all the double A's face forward. So positive is in the front and negative's in the back. All six of them face forward. That is super weird. I don't know if that's worth mentioning, but I'm gonna assume it is, so I'm gonna bring it up anyways. Let's talk about the triggers. This blaster has a rev trigger, a main trigger, and a mag release. If we go to the mag release first, it is a very nice smooth mag release that is a paddle style just like the Spectrum had, but unlike the Spectrum, this mag release is definitely improved and can actually take 18 round magazines. So thank God they fixed that. And it is close enough to where you can easily press it with your middle finger. I still prefer just doing it like this, but you can press it with your middle finger. It really isn't hard. As for the rev trigger, it is still way too big, but I will say that it is an improvement over the Spectrum, if only by a little bit. It's not quite as big, and it definitely has a nicer micro switch inside of it, but it still sucks. I still don't like the rev trigger because of this oversized nonsense that they're going for. And as for the main trigger, oh my gosh. It's really good. The main trigger on this blaster is very, 
very snappy. And I would say that it's better than the Strife, except for the part where if you just lubricate a Strife trigger a little bit, then it already becomes better than this, but good try, Dart Zone. You got really close. And on that note, the mag insertion and release, oh my gosh, it's magnificent. Magnificent. It mag drops with no resistance at all, and no matter what magazine you put in the blaster, it just fits right in. It's a very nice solid mag release, it's not loose or anything, but it's just so perfectly crafted to perfectly fit the mags in and drop the mags out. I love this mag release more than I love the mag releases on pretty much any other blaster that I've seen. This is so good. I have no complaints with this magwell. Oh my gosh. It's fantastic. I love the way this works. This is really good. It's, it's really good. I love that. I love the mag release. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's see this thing fire. Thunderbolt. Do I think this blaster is good? Unlike the Spectrum, yes! I love this thing! This thing is really, really fun, and it rocks, and it's super enjoyable to use, and it's comfortable, and it works nice. Is it a strife killer? No! No, it isn't! And to explain why that is, I feel like I have to explain why the strife can't be brought down in the first place, and why it's as popular as it is in the first place. And there are two very specific conditions that would have to be met for something to be counted as a strife killer. The first specific condition is that it would have to be easier to modify than the strife, and that is nearly impossible to do, because the strife setup is perfect right out of the box. You have a single loop of wiring set up that connects to a micro switch right here on the trigger. It has two locks, one for this part up here on the jam door and one for the mag release, which can just be rotated to fix, or you can just desolder them and create one perfect loop. And the flywheel cage just comes right out, so you can just fit a new cage in. There's no clips, there's no solvent welds, there's nothing holding all of the parts in, so you can easily fiddle with whatever parts you want and modify it to your heart's content. On top of that, all all the parts are mounted onto the right side of the blaster, so when you take the left side of the blaster off, you can just put it wherever you want. You don't need to keep it close to the right side of the blaster. Like, if the batteries were on this side, then you would have to do that. That would be a problem, and that is a problem that the Thunderbolt and the Spectrum both face. The second condition would be that the cages and setup for the blaster would have to be a lot more modular than the Strife. And well, that doesn't really work because the Strife's cage setup is already compatible with the Rapid Strike's cage setup, and there are so many flywheel cages that you can get for the Strife, I can't even list them off. There are machined cages, there's metal cages, there's titanium cages, there are like plastic injection molded cages, there's thousands of 3D printed cages. There is like a nearly infinite amount of things you can do with the Strife right out of the box. And even if it wasn't for cages, there have to be cosmetic kits. There's body kits for this, like the Chris Vector kit or the AR-15 kit for the Strife. There's lots of custom kits that you can put on the Strife to make it look however you want. The form factor is perfect for it because you have a barrel attachment, a sock attachment, and two rails. The positioning of these attachments are perfect to mount any attachments that you could possibly want. While in contrast, the Thunderbolt has a nicer, like, construction style shell design. I think that it looks a little bit nicer just out of the box than the Strife does. Please don't kill me, Phase 1 Foam. I just like the way that this looks a little bit more than the Strife until you put some attachments on the Strife. But the cage setup of this blaster is not the same as the Strife, and there aren't as many different combinations for cages that you can do with the Strife. And on top of that, batteries on this side. You have to cradle it on, you have to cradle both sides of the shell together. It's a pain. Modding this would be more of a pain than the Strife does. So that already is a problem. Plus there just aren't that many body kits for this either. So that's another problem that hasn't been met either. 
The only way for a blaster to count as a strife killer has nothing to do with its performance and functionality out of the box. It's how modular the blaster is and how usable the blaster is in a modding setting. Because everybody kind of already knows that out of the box, the strife kind of sucks. It's very fiddly, the locks are really annoying, and it doesn't work that well. Those are all things that the Thunderbolt has improved on, but that has nothing to do with why the strife is so beloved. The strife is beloved because it's so modular and and you can do whatever you want with it. And unless a company manages to do everything the Strife is doing better and more efficiently than the Strife originally did, a Strife killer is impossible. With everything that I just said out of the way, if you were to choose between this and the Strife for a stock blaster to take to a nerf war, this thing is absolutely amazing and I'd honestly give it a very high recommendation. I think the blaster works very well, is very comfortable, and there aren't very many problems with it. They really did fix most of the problems that the Spectrum had, except the Rev Trigger. I still hate the Rev Trigger, but I can get around the Rev Trigger because everything else this blaster is doing is better than the Spectrum, and in some ways, better than the Strife, out of the box. So if you want to get this blaster, I'll link it in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.